Chapter 5, Distributed Forces. Uh, just take note that in your syllabus, this might be Chapter 4. Um, you know, we did the first three chapters of the textbook. And then in your syllabus, I think the course coordinator said that this is called Chapter 4. But take note that, it's, that in the textbook, we're looking at Chapter 5, Distributed Forces. Okay, so... What is the big idea in this chapter? Uh, well, the, the, the big idea is, if you remember, we spoke about concentrated forces. And here we're going to look at distributed forces. So we can just begin by looking at an example. So if you've got a tire over here, right, if you, you know, if you're looking at the whole car, and all you're interested in is is general a general idea of the the forces acting on this car then um, we would often replace that surface with simply a these normal forces if you remember say a normal force there and a normal force there but actually in real life these are not concentrated uh, forces a concentrated force is a force acting at a single point but in real life it's actually if you zoom in it's actually a distributed force meaning the force is applied over a, a an, an area okay so this is the idea that we're gonna we're gonna study in this chapter is how do we deal with forces when we consider them to be not acting at a single point, but over a distributed area. Um, so there's an example of the tire. Here is a, a, a bearing. So normally, if, if we would just be uh, looking at the forces, we would say, well, okay, we've got this bearing that's in contact with the race. And we say, okay, let's, if we do a free body diagram of this, uh, of this bearing then we remove the race and we replace with a single normal contact force a concentrated right but if you zoom in it's actually not a concentrated force it's distributed over a certain area okay so there's a there's many examples actually no force is a concentrated force in real life all forces are distributed it just depends on the situation like I said, depends on the situation. And um, we will look at how to treat those in this video. So what is the, what, what is the, the idea here that I want to give you is twofold. Kind of a, a, guiding, a guiding idea. The first is, what we want to do is we want to determine, as you can see, it's distributed over a certain area or a volume or a line or a surface. So what do we want to do is we want to see how do we get the resultant force of that distributed force. Okay, so we want to get the first thing we want to say is, okay, well, it's it's distributed, but we want to get the total force or a resultant force or the effective force these are all just words I'm making up to try to give us some kind of intuition okay and then the second thing we want to ask ourselves is okay where does that force that resultant force that total force act okay so I want you want these two things to guide you right a distributed force so it's some more intuition say now you've got a beam or, or some object like this and you apply lots and lots of concentrated forces right some many many different concentrated loads what we want to do is we want to say okay well let's sum these guys up let's sum them up to get a total force but then once we've sum summed them up we need to find a, a kind of an equivalent position somewhere on the structure where we can apply it, a single resultant force, 
so that it has the same effect on the structure. Okay? So, this is kind of hopefully what will guide us. So I'm just going to read you. When forces are applied over a region whose dimensions are not negligible compared with other pertinent dimensions, then we must, act, we must account for the actual manner in which the force is distributed. We do this by summing the effects of the distributed force over the entire region using mathematical integration. Okay? This is this point one. That's point one. We sum the effects of this distributed force over the entire region using mathematical integration. Okay. I think that's good for an introduction. Let's keep this video a bit short. So I'll see you in the next one.